What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nudge Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, uh, let's get up to date. There has been a few announcements uh, since James Gunn's revelation of the first chapter or partial chapter of chapter one, Gods and Monsters. Uh, there's been some updates. There's been the names of uh, James Mangold and also, Brian, uh... Mr. Guillermo del Toro, which is interesting as well. I think that's, I think he's mentioned before. I think he's been attached actually to uh, mess around with the with the Justice League Dark as, as mm -hmm. well. Uh, and some recent tweets from James Gunn. Brian, what does this all mean? Are you excited for, I mean, I know we kind of, when we talked about Swamp Thing, we were a little bit iffy and, and not quite, uh, 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 we weren't understanding the choice for that, but with the possible additions of these guys, it could be exciting. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so almost we we were told by Gunn and Saffron that several directors were close, and we would be getting announcements soon. We then immediately got report after the day after that James Mangold was in top early talks regarding Swamp Thing for an idea about the character that he pitched them on. So this was not studio outreach. This was director that apparently has an affinity for this particular character and has a take and wants to tell it. And, you know, James Mangold is, he's, he's a somebody, right? This is somebody who gave us Logan, somebody who, you know, and other, who's been around. He's, he's doing Indiana Jones 5 this year. He's done Ford versus Ferrari, 310 to Yuma. This is a guy who generally gives you solid entertainment. So that at least got my attention, that a project that seemed a little offbeat to us all of a sudden had a, you know, a pretty top-shelf director interested. Um, and then, as you said, a second rumor popped up that this was Guillermo del Toro's dream character to explore in the DC universe and that maybe he could be in the mix. I mean, those are very different films, I will say, depending on who they, if it's one of those two guys, you're going to get a very different outcome in terms of genre, in terms of style. I think Del Toro certainly would lend itself more to the monster aspect of the film and that they did want the horror side of it. He probably is more of a natural for that. Mangled is probably a little bit stronger for if you just want sort of, hey, I want to I want to park this ball 250 yards in the middle of the fairway and appeal to kind of a wide base and have a very solid, consistent, you know, storytelling approach. I think he's probably a little more reliable. Del Toro might be a little more polarizing. But I mean, Pablo, either of these guys in the director's chair, it's probably still not going to be top of our list, but it definitely moves it up at least a little bit in terms of our interest yeah uh are you surprised by the outreach of these directors yeah a little bit i mean I, but you wouldn't you expect more directors to come out and be like hey i want to do this project i want to do this project yeah and i think remember like we we surmised that gun and saffron by leaving that elseworlds path open were in part basically inviting that that doesn't mean that doesn't mean they have to say yes Right. And they clearly are going to say no a lot of times. But, I, you know, you, you do want to hear from people that are at this level of talent to kind of say, like, yeah, I was a fan of this character. And I always thought I could come up with a, you know, a certain arc or here's a comic that I really love and think would translate well to film. Like, why would you not take the call? At least, you know, you can always then say, all right, that's that's not what we're looking for. But but, yeah, I'm a little surprised that it's Swamp Thing that has kind of drawn the biggest early interest from, from these guys but maybe that's like this speaks to like almost the the cult status of, of that character is like um uh, something that a lot of people actually do love and maybe maybe in some ways it validates the choice to have swamp thing be in chapter one that you've got two directors you know kind of beating down their door saying hey can we can i do this yeah uh very interesting to see I mean, if their interest lies in one film or multiple films. Uh, but this is certainly kind of surprising, Brian. And I think more directors are going to reach out for certain projects. Hopefully your boy Kaczynski. Is it Kaczynski? 
Oh, Joe Kaczynski. That's my Superman yeah, 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 guy. That's yeah, my hope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What were some of the things that James Gunn has recently come out with, Brian, that has you uh, wanting to dig a little deeper and, and perhaps re reveals some ideas as to the future of this uh, chapter? Well, he's been right back on social media. Um, <laughs> so we've got to pay attention to the feed because he, he is out there. Yeah. He... A fan commented that they were upset about, again, Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot being let go, but Ezra Miller being kept around. And that word the fan used, well, he'd been a knucklehead. The other two have done it right. And Gunn's response was interesting, as it always is. Mm -hmm. Nothing new on Cavill. He just said, Henry Cavill didn't fit my Superman, period. Okay, we knew that. Ezra's movie has already been made period <laughs> that didn't sound like a man who was looking to bring that person back i know ezra movie <laughs> is done that's why they're doing all they can to keep everybody's heads calm and chill everything is business as usual right and they think they got a winner that's they, yeah. they think they got a winner and they need the reset so ezra miller can probably thank andy muschetti's story and direction yeah why he's not been booted and, and canceled yet by the studio because that's how i read it they need the film they want the film out there and they want to use it as a way to wipe the slate clean it's not about ezra miller's about to get some 10-year contract off this and the comment yeah. kind of says that past yeah. tense been made but then he said he left the door open for gall sort of to which another fan jumped in and said does this mean you met with her recently to which he simply replied, yes, we met with her. Interesting. And that's it. Now, we'll talk about it in our show's show. There is a project that connects to her world. Now, he didn't say anything about what they talked to her about. I think it would be a mistake to 100% assume that it was about continuing as Wonder Woman. As we said, they, they clearly are going to reshuffle the deck. And we know Momoa might be a, a prime candidate for this, but maybe there's other characters. Maybe Gal Gadot is somebody they want to be in business with. Maybe they want to restructure a contract and have her do something else for them. Wouldn't rule that out. But he very clearly opened the door for her to remain a part of the DCU in some capacity. But that's who, Brian? Who, who, I who... Uh, who and what role does Gal Gadot, Gadot, Gadot other than Wonder, Wonder Woman, does she fit in? I I I don't I don't see it happening. I, I don't. I, mean, I, don't I, I don't see where she fits. Well, it's hard. To, it's hard for her to get a bigger role. Let's put it that way, right? You've been Wonder Woman in the in the DC kind of hierarchy. You're not going to be. She, she's not going to be Supergirl. We kind of know that. It doesn't yeah. fit the age age profile. Could she be somebody within the authority? Um, could she be? Could she be Hippolyta? Like, could she be an, an older Amazon within the same universe, and they hand it off to a, a new Diana? Okay. And they're like, "Hey, we don't have the money to pay you twenty million a film, but can we can we work something out where you work kind of part time on a couple projects, lend your name, and we kick you a couple million for you to kind of help validate a few things." Yeah, yeah. Could be. Right? Interesting. Hey, as long, listen, we're ecstatic about the possibility of Jason Momoa being Lobo. And he was Aquaman, right? We're assuming that he won't be playing Aquaman after this uh, movie comes out. Let's see what happens there, Brian, because, I mean, I don't think it's going to make that billion dollars. Yeah. But by the way, the more I thought about it, because, like I said, I couldn't quite figure Momoa's social media post basically saying there was something cooking and then there was absolutely no mention of him in the presentation. But then I was like, you know what? That is such a better thing to do at Comic-Con. Because Jason Momoa is he's a ham, man. He's an, he's an entertainer. And if you like, you could have him roll into Hall H on the motorcycle in costume. 
I'm telling you, this is going to be a, a historic Comic Con, Brian. I told you. I've been saying it. So then I was like, that makes me think that's why he's. They were very careful not to mention his name. Is that that that's where they're going to unveil his new role, and everyone will go wild. And you know, yeah, yeah I think we'll, we'll be excited too. So. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, Guillermo del Toro, James Mangold being the ones doing the Swamp Thing. That is a very interesting proposition. Uh, I think a lot of Swamp Thing fans, I think, would, would lend themselves to uh, a favor Guillermo del Toro because of his uh, effects, right? The way yep. he, he makes things look. Uh, Mango because of story I don't know um, I think it's a win-win either either way yeah. um, you know what uh, Tracy tr texted he said uh, what's that guy from uh, Top Gun Maverick uh, not the, the cocky one the young cocky one Miles Teller no or Glenn Powell yes he want he, supposedly he wants to do boost to gold I think that's perfect Oh, that could work. He looks like Booster Gold. I think that would be perfect. Tracy mentioned Chris Pratt's name for that role. I'm like, nah, I don't. I don't want to see him play the same dude with a different nah, name. That's why it won't be Chris Pratt. Exactly. James Gunn knows that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anything else, Brian? Before we wrap this one up? No, but I would say the, the the other thing, just the last footnote is the Mangold and Del Toro thing. Remember, there was a lot of hemming and hawing about Warner Brothers when they kind of basically marched through the catalog and cut all these projects. And then they did the day and date. Remember last year and they lost Christopher Nolan and they ticked off Denny Villeneuve. And like, you know, the word around town was like, oh, nobody's going to want to work with them again. And it's like, one day after their new plan is out there, two of the better directors in Hollywood made an inbound call to say, we want to work with you on this. So, you know. But that's a that's testament to, 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 to Brian, opportun an opportunity to do something that you probably wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to do, uh, but under different circumstances, under different people that are, are, are now no longer there and they get the opportunity to work with people who, uh, you know, they, they weren't the, the last regime, yeah, right? The it. last regime screwed everybody up. That they, that people didn't were walking away from them. Now that they're no longer there, why not? Speaking you know? of, James Gunn finally took up for Henry Cavill in one, in one respect. He, he had another quote, which he, uh, he said, just in passing, because he re-emphasized the age thing. And he said, you know, he's like, Henry got bleeped around by a lot of people. <laughs> I was like, care to name names? I was like, yeah, we know yeah, at yeah. least one person on that list, yeah, but yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway. He knows. But yeah. yeah. He knows. So. He knows. He, he, he. None of what James Gunn, you know what's so gratifying or, or satisfying, I should say, about what James Gunn has said is that we've been saying it and, and someone that now, has now said it out loud for everyone to hear. It's no longer from this writer or that writer. It's from the top dog. So, there's a new sheriff in town. Uh, yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of that possibility of Booster Gold being played by Glenn Powell. I think that's a perfect cast. Uh, hopefully, that gets done. Uh, but we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.